Join me, James Parker, a sculpture artist on a journey to visit the Logie Almond Estate in Perthshire here in Scotland. I've been invited today by the new owners to visit the Craig Lee Slate Quarry. Logie Almond straddles the Highland fault line which cuts through the land like a geographical knife, severing highlands from lowlands. The fields in the lowland rise to meet forestry and in turn this gives way to 3,500 acres of the most incredible grouse moor. As an artist working mainly in slate, I'm excited to have a look around. So now I'm here at the Craig Lee Quarry at Logie Almond with estate manager Philip Blount and he's going to tell me a little bit about the quarry and about the buildings that were built round about the quarry to house the staff and the office and things like that. So there's been a quarry here at Craig Lee since the 1600s and the Logie Almond estate has had a key part of that in its history when it was part of the Schoon Palace estate for Earl of Mansfield. Various properties around the estate used to be the estate manager's house, our cottage known as Benella's Cottage was that property and in the grounds of Benella's Cottage you can see the old footings of what would be the quarry workers log sheds that they used to live in. Up here at the quarry there's an old office building that's now collapsed that contains the original cast iron stove and the other side of the quarry there's an old stone building that previously held all of the uh, explosives etc for when they blew this vast amount out. The Logan Almond Estate would like to try and uh, see if we can use this natural resource that we have in the middle of the estate and see if we can find ways for people to come and use the slate for sculpturing or wall building etc to, to really make the most of it and see if we can continue the history now in, in the modern times. Over here we have the ammunition shed that Philip mentioned, positioned over there, well away from everything else. Sadly, slate quarrying in Scotland ceased in 1955 after the final closure of the Balahoola slate quarries. Yet, with over 200 Scottish quarries producing a vast range of slate colours and forms, right up until the early 20th century, quarrying remains a big part of Scottish history. Now, the main reason I'm here at Logie Almond today is to have a real good look at this slate. First impressions when I arrived here were just wow, the sheer scale of the place is absolutely incredible and for somebody that works with slate every day, to have something like this on my doorstep would be absolutely unbelievable. Of course I don't want to get carried away so it's really important to have a real good look at it and decide what I could do with it and use it to its full potential. Most of it at first glance looks fairly smooth but on closer inspection a lot of it has quite a lot of lumps and bumps and is quite small as well. I've not managed to find anything resembling an actual roofing slate here so what I'm going to do is take my hammer and chisel with me and go in search of some larger squarer pieces of stone that are quite flat on the top and the bottom and that should indicate that it's got quite a good straight seam running through it and do my best to split that so that I can use Scottish slate in the production of some of my sculptures. Let's go and have a look and see what we can find. For local purposes, slate was taken from Craig Lee for many, many years, and for over a hundred years, the quarry had been worked to supply a more extended demand of above 1.2 million roofing slates a year. The slate has a peculiarity that while one portion of it supplies slates of a dark blue colour, those obtained from the other portion are of a sea green hue, but otherwise there's no discernible difference between them. I'm going to find a bigger piece of slate with quite a 
a square end on it and try and split it through. So here's a piece here that's not particularly big. It's big enough that if I were to split it, I could build something with it because it's got enough depth that I'll go back into the sculpture and make it nice and strong. And it does have quite a nice square face. And I've just spotted another really big piece of slate here. This piece here, it's got a nice square face again. And the thing is, if this wasn't going to be used to build a sculpture, a dry stone waller or a stonemason would be overjoyed at working with stone like this. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's have a go at splitting these pieces of stone and see how we got on. there it's actually starting to break out a little bit here but it is splitting and that's split nicely the grain seems quite strong and it's split fairly evenly so the next thing to do after I split this piece of slate as you've seen me do so many times in the workshop is use a hammer to shape an arc on it or whatever shape is required for the sculpture that I'm making to find out how this slate works here I'm just going to use this sharp edge and this big piece of stone before we split it and just lay this over the edge like this and I'm going to use a smaller hammer it might not be heavy enough actually given the thickness of this slate but just try and work an edge on it and see what it's like it's certainly quite hard well that went pretty well I think it looks quite good beautiful blue slate in this quarry you find blue slate and green slate as well should have quit while I was ahead shouldn't I? so let's have a go at splitting this big piece and see how that works I'm not expecting to get all the way through this without a piece breaking off but we'll see how we get on it seems to have a piece of quartz or something in it there as long as I achieve a piece that's big enough to use really It's a pretty hard slate, that's quite clear. This is actually just broken off here, it's actually left a, a beautiful face on that piece of stone. So I'll have a go at splitting that again, see how that works out. I'm absolutely certain that some of it could be used to make a sculpture. I'm going to keep tinkering around with it, maybe take a few bits home back to the workshop with me and have a go at working with those and see how I get on. I think if I were to come back here and make a sculpture, I would really want to embrace the slate that I found here. To me this feels like a typical Scottish slate, quite thick and heavy. The slate in some way reflects a wider landscape. I'd be better to embrace those rugged qualities and use it in a thicker form. It's more in the style of those that I used to make where I used much thicker slate. As you can imagine, I've visited quite a few slate quarries and mines over the years in the Wake District and in Wales, both on holiday and professionally as well. And it really is great to be able to explore a bit. This tunnel here is just over 20 metres long and it goes through a huge piece of slate. And the idea was that there were small trains that used to come up the side of the hill on a little railway 
and they would move slate from within the quarry out through the wall of the quarry and haul the slate down to a lower level. I guess one thing they did have in their favour is that they were coming up the hill empty and down the hill full so I guess that would make it a lot easier for them. Just looking at the slate here that they have used to shore up the walls of the tunnel, it does give you a good idea of the uses that the slate can be put to. Slate's extracted from all sorts of places. Often it comes out of quarries where vehicles drive straight into the quarries and then they're loaded up with the uh, slate that's been blasted off the rock face straight into the back of the truck and out for production. On other occasions, slate comes out of a mine where you have to actually tunnel for it and go straight into the side of a hill to be able to get that slate and bring it out rather than move all the stone above it. The quarries access through the tunnel that I've just walked through. They've actually gone 30 or 40 meters down below the level where I'm standing now, which makes the quarry about 100 meters deep. So that's a colossal amount of slate. Thanks to the new roads that have been built here in the estate, I'm able to actually drive round the quarry and up to the top and look back down into the quarry. So let's go and do that and see what it looks like from above. thinking there's a lot worse places in the world to eat your wine. What a fantastic view. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a huge favour and give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my channel and enjoy seeing beautiful things being made, then smash that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so that you never miss another video.